what I'm doing. Same people all the time. Uh, kind of gave up making too many copies, so um, but I'll still take the names on a piece of paper. Um, can you put today's little? Okay. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. You should you should have uh, three handouts. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll talk about the, these handouts. Uh, one I made in a different color, just because we'll, or you'll refer um, to this, uh, you know, quite often the next few weeks. So take it as a cheat sheet or whatever. Um, but it kind of gives a recipe for the. Uh, the method we're going to be talking about um, in in this kind of part of the course um, that has to do with the optimal control or, or problems that come uh, related to optimal control theory. So, uh, so I'll I'll say that the textbook doesn't have anything uh, in this. Um, well, any chapter that covers this, so we'll kind of take a break from using the textbook for maybe two or two weeks or so, um, and then we'll return and talk about chapter six and seven in your textbook. Okay. Okay. So, well, I should say that uh, if you go back in chapter one. In the exercise uh, section, uh, there are, there is an exercise number five and subsequent number six. So there are two exercises in chapter one that um, are in fact related to control theory. So uh, in disguise, so so uh, chapter one exercise. Five and six, and we'll talk about you know how they fit in this larger theory of optimal controls, and also uh, one one other thing to mention is that we'll be talking about problems uh, that um, the underlying kind of um, approach is a dynamical system approach, so. Um, Either, either discrete or continuous, mostly con continuous dynamical systems. But in addition to that, we're going to have some sort of control on that dynamical system. Um, and we're going to control that dynamics so that certain objective is, is satisfied or is maximized or is minimized. Okay, So you can think about this um, new chapter sort of as an optimization in dynamical systems. And I'll give you an example in a second. Um, but I think it kind of puts together the, the first two, I mean the first two big uh, blocks in this course that we talked about optimization without dynamical system. Then we talk about dynamical systems and we didn't re really talk about optimization. Uh, so so this would be kind of types of problems or examples where modeling comes into handy um, and where there is something that we want to optimize um, when when the process or the you know the underlying dynamics is Given either continuously or discrete. Okay, so let me kind of give you the first example is, and it's pretty much related to this chapter one, exercise five and six. Um, so imagine that we have a fishing or harvesting um, in a uh, fish population. So just imagine like we have the 
Uh, actually, let me. Yeah, so I'm going to use the terminology in that exercise. So they're talking about fin, fin whale. Fin whales. Um, and the basic assumption is that they grow using the logistic growth model, according to a logistic growth model, where the intrinsic growth rate is 8%, maximum sustained population is 400,000. So that these are exactly the numbers that we use in, you know, in our in uh, our discussion on uh, chapter four. Right, and again, just think about one. Whoops, one single population. There's no competition. There is no uh, what else? Food source. But instead, um, what we have is we have some human intervention. Okay, so. So let's assume that the number of um, whales harvested per year is um, alpha times u times x and let's say alpha is, I don't know, 10 to the negative I'm just going to take exact, these exact numbers uh, is 10 to the negative 6 looks to me 5 the negative 6 Okay, so it doesn't quite matter. Um, and then I have some parameter here, which U is stands for level of fishing effort in boats days. So. Basically, what this is saying is that before you you start your you know season, you kind of decide I'm gonna I'm gonna put so much effort. I'm gonna have this let's say for now fixed uh, number of boats uh, times days, right? Again, this is oversimplifying, but think about this as kind of, kind of a constant, a parameter that one decides before before things even uh, start I mean before the, the, the fishing season, right? So the resulting dynamical system or the dynamics is you know given by sort of a differential equation alpha u x okay. So it's a minus because it's subtracting, right, from that population when you harvest. Okay, so this this looks like nothing, uh, you know, different than what we've done. So you can study the steady state. You can study the stability, right? And you can do uh, other things based on this. So, for instance. Um, Let's imagine, imagine, so let's say u is constant, and constant in time, I mean. So then, then one can find the steady states. So let, let, me, let me identify. This is the growth rate. And this would be the harvest rate. Okay, so the steady state is uh, 
level of, you know, a population level, right, a population of, of uh, whales that, for which the growth rate equals the harvest rate, or balances the harvest rate, so it's got the right-hand side equal to zero, right? So it's growth rate equals the harvest rate, or, you know, basically the right-hand side equals zero. So this is Rx1 minus X over K minus alpha Ux equals zero. So it's kind of a simple um, equation you can do by hand, right? So you have X times R1 minus X over K minus alpha U. I'm just factoring an X, right? So so x equals zero, it's an obvious steady state. There's no fish, there's nothing to harvest, right? Or this other one, which is r, one minus x over k, uh, minus alpha u equals zero, from which you can solve for x, um, what would it be? 1 minus x over k is alpha over r u. So it looks like x would be what? k times 1 minus alpha over r u. Okay, so this is the x star. So this is the one we're interested in. When there's fish in the pond and... Okay, so this would be kind of the steady state. And notice what happens... If you were to, to draw, um, I mean, we don't have a phase portrait because we only have one variable, right? So it would be kind of a plot of x versus t. If this is where the maximum sustainable population is in absence of harvesting, right? This is where um, the new steady state would be, right? So maybe, maybe let me do this. So in absence of harvesting, so no harvesting, and with harvesting, it's supposed to be the same level here, but okay, so if, if there is no harvesting, what's the logistic growth model say if you start below this maximum stem population you're going to go towards it right if you start above you're going to go you're going to decrease so that's the maximum stem population without harvesting and with harvesting what happens is it's going to stabilize around a small uh, Well, this is a steady state, right? It's going to be below the, the maximum stem population, obviously, right? Because you, you're you're fishing, you know, you're you're taking fish out of the water, and so if there is a steady state, that steady state is going to be less than the maximum stem population. Okay, and the, you can compute what that level is based on the on on this control parameters u, right? So. With harvesting this, oh, and I. How do you see that? In fact, it's actually going. It's it's kind of has the same. It's kind of a new, it's like a new, maximum sustained population. So if you're, if you're below, you're gonna actually, grow to this number. You're above, you're gonna decrease to that number. How how can you see that? From your dynamical system. idea. If you look at the right hand side, remember the right hand side, when it's zero it gives you the steady states, right? When it's positive and when it's negative, it tells you when where the population grows and de or, or, or declines, right? So if you're above zero, x is always positive, so it's just a matter of looking at this factor, right? 
and this factor is linear in x, so so it means it's and it's linear in x and it has a negative sign in front of x, right? So it means the right hand side is positive when x is smaller than that new maximum stream population and is bigger and is negative when x is bigger. So right, so so if you were to plot the right hand side versus x, it would be like this, right? So this is where x well that's not right because I only took that factor. There's x times times that, but it's obviously it's positive here and it's negative here, right? Uh, and I'm certainly wrong with this. Okay. So it's not linear, it's quadratic, right? So it is quadratic. But it's quadratic and it has a uh, negative coefficient in front of the x squared. So this is 0 and this is x star. Okay? So it has the same kind of uh, behavior except at a lower level. Right? Okay. Any questions? And the level, it can be computed exactly, you know, if you know u, you know alpha, you know r, and you know k. Okay? So that's, that's basically that exercise uh, talking about, and then also it talks about the sensitivity to the intrinsic growth rate. Right? So sensitivity of that uh, levels uh, of that steady state to the growth rate, which would be r. So you can do other things. But we're now interested in a slightly different analysis of this. Um, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to say maybe, obviously, this the once you decide on the level of harvesting effort, so on this U, that's going to affect what happens with the population of of the whales. But maybe what we want to do is we want to adjust that harvest uh, level of harvesting over time. So we want to think about U as being maybe time dependent. Okay. So we want to really think about U as a control parameter. So remember, in any, in any model, what you have, you have your state variables. You have some constants that you don't, you know, once you pick some values, you don't mess around with them, right? Because those are certain numbers. Then you have some parameters, right? Uh, that you maybe pick some values, then do sensitivity to those parameters, right? But this is going to be in a separate, uh, in its own category. Uh, this, you can think about as a, actually, uh, maybe not even parameter. Maybe we should call it variable of course if if this is going to be constant over time think about it as a parameter right but if it's cost if it's if it's if you allow to control it with variable values over time then this is its in its own is uh, a distinguished sort of variable in your model okay so one of the goals might be so um, so, assuming one can um, choose u as a function of t, possibly, with certain restriction, restrictions, um, question is is um, how to to control the dynamical system uh, 
um, given a certain cost function or maybe um, objective function given a certain cost function needs to be to be maximized or minimized in general optimized okay and again um, I think exercise six which is a follow-up of that so of this scenario is saying it's giving you a cost for harvesting so as an example of that just uh, imagine this so you have uh, imagine cost of whaling is five hundred dollars per boat day so cost of whaling is five hundred dollars uh, per boat day and the price of a fin whale carcass that's pretty cruel to think about but um, it's like six thousand six thousand dollars okay so we're gonna soon introduce what's called a, um, the, the objective function or functional but think about it uh, the cost or pr in this case let's say I think this would be a profit right to maximize a profit so the profit in this case would be billed the following profit would be what revenue so this would be six thousand dollars right times X let's see it's not really X let's see what is it uh, Yeah, it's not it's not X, right? Um, yeah, it's alpha U X, right? So it's alpha. Okay, let me see. So it's going to be six thousand times alpha X U, for instance, minus. Five hundred times U, right? For instance, okay. Okay, so so this needs to be maximized, right? But again, in this particular problem, we uh, we really assume assume u is constant. Okay, if u were not constant, then you would have uh, possibly a different different. You know, you wouldn't have necessarily this constant term, five hundred u, right? But you would have, uh, if you were depending on, on time, it would be an integral of u, because u is a rate. So I should, I should be more specific here is um, this really assumes that what you do is you do over a long period of time, right? So you have like a long period of time. So this is meant to be a, as a rate. Right. Um, so 
I think you should you should multiply this by the, the number of years or, or maybe one year you know, f uh, number of days in a year that that your harvest is is taking place right but it's a constant that number of, of, of days in a year when the harvest takes place is a constant so that would be just multiplied by the number of days right so maybe this would be times number of days okay so in, in if you want to be thinking about variable in time then uh, this is example four in this handout so this is u is constant but if u is not constant so if u is not necessarily constant then what you have to maximize in this case the profit would be an integral of 6000 times the harvest rate I think we use this H to indicate harvest rate minus the cost times the level of, of harvesting DT over some period of you know, say number of days. Okay? So do you see the difference? So let's see, this is, um, so T is the final time, let's say in days, and H is the harvest rate which you know I mean one model is to say it's a it's proportional to the number of fish in the pond and the level of effort but that's just one model uh, it's a very oversimplified model right okay so so in this handout which again is is on the website as well um, I have four well so besides this cheat sheet um, I have four examples that are that are solved. Um, using, I mean, having this kind of objective in mind, of controlling a dynamical system, and uh, with the you know uh, with a cost function or objective function to be optimized in mind, um, and. Um, we're going to talk about each of these four examples, and in particular, we're going to talk about this one. Okay, uh, but I wanted to kind of realize the huge kind of jump in complexity when you st when you allow your control parameter to vary in time. You see, if you if you are just if you are just saying. Uh, I'm going to control. I'm going to control this dynamical system by a constant. It basically means you're just picking a parameter value, right? And you're doing sense. I mean, you're doing kind of sensitivity to that parameter value. But that parameter value is a constant in your system, right? So in in, in this uh, in this scenario, you would be just uh, you know pick different values of u, right? And then compute the objective or the profit in this case for that value of u. So that's why this problem set set in uh, sits in uh, chapter 1 because there's nothing dynamic there, right? It's just saying at steady state I mean take this, this is going to be what? This is going to be x, right? Take this x plug it in that J, in that profit, right? And see what value of U you should pick to maximize that profit, right? You look at me like a very superstitious. So, so I'm, looking, I'm looking at this, right? You, you had that X as above, right? 
as a function of u. You just plug it in here, and your objective is going to be only a function of u. Then you just maximize taking a derivative set equal to zero, right? Probably not nice numbers, but it will be something that uh, that it was doable in chapter one. Okay. Now, of course, if if you were uh, if I would have given you this problem back in chapter one, you wouldn't have had at all any kind of idea of the background of this. You know, why why do we think about those kind of problems uh, when there was no dynamics underneath? But Okay, so we're not going to be just doing just that. We're going to allow u to be a function of time. It's going to be an, un an unknown function of time, right? That we're going to have to find or uh, decide on. Okay, so so um, so again, the goal, the main goal, is to find u such that our j is maximum max possible over a set of so-called admissible controls so what do we mean by admissible control? Well, we really mean that the control variables in our model is going to have some restrictions. For instance, it can only be positive. Okay? That's again not, it's like an linear programming. That's not really a constraint, right? That's, that's something almost by, uh, by default. But for instance, there, is, there could be another uh, constraint that says u cannot be more than some 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 number uh, because you can only have this many boats. Okay, your company has only a hundred boats. Okay, so for instance, e could be a maximum level of effort. There is some regulation. There is, you know. There's some governmental regulation that says, no matter what, I don't care about, you know, I mean, of course, with no regulation, you could fish everything, you know, make a lot of profit, right? But it could be that, you know, your maximum level per day cannot be more than, I don't know, 100 boats, right? That could possibly also be, yeah. That, that's also, whatever he is, it's just a constraint. Yeah, this is just a fixed, yeah. This is like one of those parameters, true parameters, right? That one sets before even, you know, starting the model. And this, again, comes from, think about it, some regu re regulatory constraint. Okay? But yeah, you, so, so you see, when you leave this kind of, um, you allow this control, variable to be within our certain limits but no other constraints then you can imagine that yes you could actually decide on your level based on how much you've you've already harvested um, so the whole thing is to uh, come up with something that will maximize your profit within this constraints right so so that's what we mean by admissible controls. We mean that it could be anything over time. If I were to plot u, uh, for instance, you, would, you could think of applying full effort. Just, you know, I have this you know, constraint based on, you know, I'm not allowed to do, but I'm going to just do the, the max possible. Is this going to give you a maximum profit? Well, you don't really know because applying maximum uh, effort it means you're going to incur those costs, right? And what if there's only two whales in the ocean, right? 
your harvest rate is going to be very low, so your 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 revenue is going to be low, right? So this may not be the most the optimal, but it's certainly admissible. Okay. Maybe you want to apply a maximum, you know, uh, effort for a while. Then I don't know. Take a few days off vacation, then apply it again, right? When you when you take a few days off, what happens with the fish population? Gets replenished, right? This is certainly admissible. Is it is it optimal? We don't know. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but, right. But we won't be, okay, so we'll be doing, uh, the question is, can we represent these things in, in certain ways that, you know, uh, uh, we, can, we can use in computation? And uh, the answer is, this is going to be for the very last, this is kind of like the holy grail of these problems. Is like, we're going to try to come up with this. We don't know this ahead of time. And just to realize the magnitude of the problem is you can, I mean, an admissible control is also um, something like this. Right? You're certainly below the constraint. Yep. So, in other words, the range of, of, of the space over which you do the optimization is, is no longer a finite dimensional. It's no longer you have 10, 10 decision variables to make, right? And you're optimizing a function of 10 variables. But in fact, it's each of these admissible controls leads to an objective, to a value for your objective, or your profit, or whatever it's called, right? Generic, we'll call it objective function. J, right? But you see how many ways you can actually have that control, right? You have lots and lots of different uh, patterns of control, right? So this is all admissible. Which one gives um, a bigger profit. And of course, which one gives the biggest profit? That's, that's our goal, right? And <clears throat> so we're not going to have something to differentiate, compute the gradient, and, and set it equal to zero and solve it, okay? So the tool for this is called a maximum principle. And I don't want to quite go into deta details of, um, of why it's called. Um, but it also bears the name of a Russian mathematician, Pontryagin Maximum Principle. Um, and this was kind of in the 50s developed. So that was right about the time when the space age. And there's a, a good connection for that. Uh, people wanted to control uh, crafts, right? You wanted to control the trajectory of certain um, of objects, right? Of rockets, of other things. So I'll uh, we'll go over this and then uh, talk about how one can start to even you know uh, solve these problems, but. To give you kind of uh, the strength of this of this tool is that once we understand how it's done, this is going to be kind of a piece of cake, uh, kind of a simplest example of of how the control should be chosen to give you a maximum profit, and for this particular problem, imagine that if you if somebody somebody tells you this control should be applied. Um, to get the profit, the maximum profit, then can you find the maximum profit? 
Well, so if I give you what u is, then you go in the, pro in the equation for the profit and do what? I plug it in there. H was a, uh, in this model was a, uh, right, uh, an expression involving u and x. You have u, so how about x? You don't have x, right? But can you find x? So in this case, was this was a model. Can you find x? Well, you certainly have your state equation or state variables, right? I mean, yeah, you have, you have the dynamical system, right? And again, if I know what u is, that's just the dynamical system that you can solve. The peculiar feature of this dynamical system is going to be what? u is most likely going to depend on time. But again, assuming that I, I tell you what it is, the optimal one, right? So, so what kind of dynamical system uh, this becomes? Hmm? Non-autonomous, right? So, so it's not like you can you can uh, do face portraits and, and stuff like this, right? You just have to solve it numerically. Um, and yes, u may, may, be, may be a heaviside function there. So you may have to solve a differential equation that has a heaviside function on the right-hand side. And typically, I should say that this u can be uh, a, a discontinuous, right? And in many cases, it will be discontinuous. It will be apply maximal effort, then not a, don't apply it all, and stuff like that, right? OK? Okay, so anyway, I hope I kind of gave you a little bit of flavor just based on what we've done so far. Um, and I only showed you this is the fourth example in the book, in our uh, handout. There are three more which I find kind of easy to follow, so I'm. Um, so these are in this handout, right, that I mentioned here. So the first example is landing something on something okay doesn't matter it's mars or but it's kind of it's a little bit like the docking problem and pardon my representation of a martian um but it's basically looking at a um simple kind of descent uh, I take the gravitational constant. So the, everything should be multiplied by an m, right? And then you would have Newton's law of gravity. Uh, Newton's law, excuse me. Uh, that that uh, mass times acceleration equals the force, right? So you would have, and again, I'm taking m to be 1. So m is 1. Um, here I have gr the gravitational force. For example, I had g equals 1. If you don't, you can put 9.8 or something. Uh, for Earth, OK, but for Mars, it's different. Um, then you have some f possibly friction, so resistance to air that's proportional to the velocity, but it could be to the square of the velocity typically, right? So this is kind of a oversimplified. But then the last thing is the most important one here is there is a control that is kind of a braking force. You're, you're braking this, you're applying a force or maybe a reverse thrust that can only be of a certain magnitude. It cannot be more than two, right? And it cannot be negative because it's a thrust. I mean, yeah, you could crash. You could enhance the crash by applying a negative U, but the point is you can apply a positive U, okay? And, uh, okay, so, so this is just another example of that control problem where you want to, what do you want to achieve? You want to pick a U so that what something happens. Well, you could actually formulate several problems. One could be, I want to minimize the amount of, of fuel that I'm using, right? 
but uh, in this case, what's, uh, we formulate the so-called time optimal problem, which says do this in minimum time so that you land with velocity zero. Okay, so. Um, Anyway, so I'm going to go through this example as well as the other. Um, notice one, one thing that, that we're going to always going to prefer to do is we're going to write, I mean, if it's, an equa if it's a single equation, if it's a single state variable like before, before we only had a fish population, right? One x. x was one dimensional. Uh, but here it's second order in, in time, meaning that it's a system of, it can be written as a system of two equations two state variables, one for the position and one for the speed. Right? So we're going to rewrite this as a system. Yeah? And, and if we didn't have this u here, then all we needed to solve this would be hmm? Say it a lot there? Phase portion. Phase portion. So we need an initial condition, click, get the solution. Right? Take a different initial condition, Click get a solution, right? So we would just see the phase part of this, and then we would understand what happens. We could take individual solutions and so forth. The moment we allow this control, it, things change, right? This could be time dependent. Then, for, imagine the zillion case uh, possibilities, right? For each possibility, you have to see, can I achieve that? What would be the time to get to the origin? In some cases, it might actually be infinite. Uh, maybe not. In this case, I think no matter what, you start with a zero velocity and some height, and you're, if you don't do anything, you're going to fall. OK, but you'll never fall with a, with a zero velocity, right? You need to apply some, some, uh, some braking. So, so the, but you have zillions of, of possibilities, right? Which one is going to give you the minimum time? OK? All right. So. So that's basically uh, where we're going to be uh, kind of basing our, uh, we're going gonna, we're gonna, to uh, develop this um, steps of solving the, the, the problem. Uh, but something extremely interesting that recently came to my uh, attention is um, I was able to find four and maybe ten, but it was getting kind of, you know, you have to become very creative. And you can, you can take any, any problem that we've talked so far, and you can think about, well, what if there's some intervention from outside, some control? Imagine some sort of optimization problem and put it in this form. But then I ran into this, um, <clears throat> there's an optimal control software called Propt. Well, the name is not so important, uh, that was developed actually last year. And it costs lots of money. Money uh, that actually, what it does, it actually solves these problems. So you have an option: either you buy this, and then you don't have to take this class, um, or you can um, take this class, learn, and, and you can do everything that that they do. Um, but I think one thing that was kind of uh, interesting is that there's a, a list of problems. So there's a guide, and I, I made a link here um, since it's, I mean, it's, wide, it's available sort of. Actually, it's here. Uh, this is over 100 problems. And I, I just printed one uh, that has to do with optimal drug, ske drug scheduling for cancer chemotherapy. But uh, you can look at, and I don't know which one it was, but 33, thank you. Um, and I should say that some of these, oops. Okay, 
Uh, some of this example, so again, 100 plus. I mean, this is uh, amazing that, um, but some of these problems are not given, I mean, are not given the description. They're just said, refer to this, okay, literature. Um, so, but some, some actually go through the, well, at least some, some more um, details. And again, I just want to flush this through, through you. That says, um, it may take a while to get used to this, but nothing, there's nothing but three equations, three, a system of three equations. Like uh, we talked about this, I, sh I gave you before, uh, example of you know, infectious disease or populations, different components of a population. Uh, so all, all this is is sort of a dynamical system, right? With some parameters. This, by the way, it's a Heaviside function. So, so this somehow there is a there is a term in this dynam in this rate of change of this first component, which may stand for what? Um, hmm. Oh wait, okay. What is x1? Okay, so it looks like it's it's related to the tumor mass, right? So the higher the tumor mass, the smaller this x1 is and vice versa, right? The bigger x1 is, the smaller the tumor mass is, okay? So x1 is related to that tumor mass. Um, so you see that it has it has actually uh, it's like a it's like a piecewise defined function, right? The, the right hand side. Okay, but you see, so I mean, if this u would not be in here, you would have no control problem, right? This would not be a control problem. The control problem comes into saying, well, uh, can I affect the drug concentration in the body through some u, right? through some control in order to do what? And this is the key. You, you always have to have something, right? You make a choice of you and what you need to do. You know, you need to, so what, what is this in this case? Would be sort of the, to maximize at some final time this value of x1, which would in turn correspond to minimizing the tumor mass, right? Okay? control problem. Find the optimal U that gives you this. Okay. And by the way, if you scroll down, I, I'm not sure I printed. I didn't print. And, and please don't print all of this. Um, then you see what the optimal turns out to be. The optimal turns out to be something. This is over time, right? This is a drug schedule. This is the value of u as a function of time. Obviously, it's not constant, right? So there is some level here. I don't know, a little bit high, then then kind of low, then nothing, right? And then high and constant. Okay. I want you to appreciate how non-trivial this is. Like it's how impossible it is to guess something like this. I mean, you can have the best intuition in the world. It would be it would be absolutely impossible to uh, to guess an optimal control strategy. And by the way, this is u, and this is the corresponding x1, x2, and they don't plot x3, right? So, so once you have the u, again, you go back into your dynamical system, right? I mean, you have u, so u becomes a time-dependent term in your in your dynamical system, right? This becomes a time-dependent, I mean, a non-autonomous system, right? And you have to solve it. Uh, how you solve it? Well, various ways. One is the ODE solve, right? Remember, I showed you that. It doesn't have a nice in the face board and the stuff. Um, <coughs> It's OD solve. It's kind of the one that allows you for any number of, of equations. Um, but here's here's the kind of the good news is 
in many of these problems, the optimal U is going to turn out to be constant for some time, and then another constant for another for the for the rest of the time, or maybe it could be. But it's it, it happens that it's it's sometimes one value, and usually it's the extreme. So if I have if I have the control constrained between zero and a hundred, then it's it's staying a hundred for a while, then zero for a while, and maybe hundred and zero. So there's some switches going on, but it's constant over some period of time. If u is constant, if that optimal u is constant, then you can actually use p plane. You can you can you can solve this system for those two different values of the constant. And if you are looking at the solution of that harvesting, I'm just going to give you that um, preview, is that you will end up with a, I don't know if I plotted it, yeah. Uh, no, I didn't plot it. But you could, in principle, do like this scissor and cut, cut with a scissor and, 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 and paste two different uh, two different face portraits, one for each value of the constant. Okay, but again, this is not really. Uh, I mean, that's not too nice of an analytic way of, of, of solving. But and actually, I'll, I'll show you. There's a bit, much better way to to ask. You know, using the computer to actually figure this. But if you um, <clears throat> if you print this, then take a scissor and then cut. Along that, that would be some kind of the portion of the face portrait for uh, maybe no harvesting. So u is zero, and this would be the face portrait for full harvesting. And of course, we need to talk about why this curve. Why? Why is this? Why do you have to cut along this curve? So that would be a very important piece. But then, if you put them together, then you could kind of follow one. Uh, trajectory into the other, okay, and this is how you would solve it. All right, so I could go on and on with with, with kind of um, motivational speeches here, but let's uh, let's get into into the um, details. So here's a framework of this. Uh, so in the case of two state variables or decision variables. Actually, you know what? I'm going to drop this decision variable. I think before we talked about this, when we talked about, you know, um, we have to optimize something, so we picked a value for, for, for our decision variables to give the, uh, the maximum minimum of our objective. But here's a little bit. I'm going to call them state variables. So if I have my system deter, you know, is described by two variables, x1 and x2, as a function of time, right? And they obey basically some, some um, I mean, they are form this dynamical system, so dx continuous dynamical system, right? dx1 dt is some function of x1, x2, and and u. And each has possibly u in in the right hand side, right? So we're U is U of T is the control variable. And at this stage is unknown, right? Now I want to emphasize that this uh, this U may may appear in both equations or may appear only in one. Right, but and by the way, u may may actually be two components. So there may be 
uh, u1 and u2, right? So this, this doesn't necessarily have to be a scalar. This could be a vector of two components, seven components, right? So, um, and um, typically, initial conditions are given, and those are, I mean, I mean, those are independent of control. I mean, those are x1 at 0 and x2 at 0. You know what, what your initial condition, what your system is at time 0. Okay? So those are... Okay? So what's the... Uh, what's the goal? So the goal is to uh, choose or find u in such a way as to optimize a certain objective functional now we've only talked about functions why do I call it functional well here's why we call it it's it's not always just a function of your state variables oftentimes like you saw that example when you looked at the profit over time it was an integral of x and u and something right so it's a function of the function x so that's why it's called functional yeah What's the significance of the so th there's nothing like it's just to, to indicate that u is a special has a special uh, uh, role you see u there's no there's no differential equation in u for u. There's no du dt equals something because that would be a state variable, right? So u is like a parameter, but it it it, it is allowed to, to vary with time. You see, when, think about when you write something that has parameters, then you put them those parameters at the end somehow, right? You list them, right? So that's kind of to distinguish between the state variables and the parameters but in this case this parameter is allowed to depend on time so it's it's really a control variable okay so so here are a few examples of, of, of such functionals um, so this functional could be a function of the final time I should, I should say this, that x1 is a function of time, x2 is a function of time, and uh, time goes between some fixed, well, not fixed, but some, say, time zero and some final time, okay? We're not going to be talking about infinite time, optimal controls for infinite times, okay? so. Again, this may, makes little sense, except think about that uh, cancer chemo chemotherapy problem. What was the objective function there? To maximize the value of one of the components at the final time. So, so that would be a true function of that value, right? Whereas in the example of the harvesting, And again, along this way, I'm, I'm kind of introducing um, some of the notation. But in the in the example of the harvesting with with time dependent right profit uh, harvesting with profit, 
it was basically an integral of the, the x1, well, there was only one. Okay, this is a two-dimensional example. But it was, the integrand in the, inside of the integral is, was uh, x of t, right, and u of t. So again, here, and u of t. So that's also a possibility for an objective function null. Okay? If you like to call it function, fine, but remember that it's a function of function it's it's a function of the state, and the state over time is a function of time, right? Um, and actually the one which is kind of the most general is it could actually be a combination of of it could actually involve a function of the final state plus a functional of of the whole trajectory of the, of the of the system from time zero, right? Now, <clears throat> um, so here's a key question for you: What would be a time optimal problem? So top, time optimal means I'm not interested in minimizing or maximizing a function of the final state because I want the final state to be zero zero. I want I want that object to land with with uh, x one zero and x two zero position zero and velocity zero, right? But I'm interested. So what I'm trying I'm trying to minimize the time it takes to get there. So what would be the Can you fit in one of these three types of, of objectives? Hmm? You think is the first example? But the, you, you see, the first in the first example, um, the final state of the system is always zero. So that would pretty much be. So so so, it has to be an objective that depends on the whole trajectory, right? So in other words, it has to be an integral. Object it has to be an integral. It has to be a functional. And in fact, it's a very it's a very simple one. So so time optimal problems. Uh, which is to minimize time over admissible use is when you can write it as the capital time t to be the integral of one over the, the span of, of the of the dynamics. So zero t of one dt. So so in other words, it's it's like example two where f naught is the function one. Okay. And again, we'll have to say. So you see, it we say that it could depend on the on the x one, x two, and u, but it may also not depend on some or not no, no, all, right? So if I pick f naught to be one, then the integral is going to be just the capital T, right? And then I'm, I'm minimizing t, or I don't know, maximizing minus t, or you know, th then you can play things uh, around with that. Okay, so so again, the goal is to maximize or minimize over all admissible controls of this functional, which is
which is uh, determined, so the value of this functional is determined by u. Okay? You pick a u as a function, right, a function of time. That u is going to determine the trajectory, x1, x2. And then everything you put in, the, in that, in that, in that, in uh, that expression for the functional, and that should be maximum possible. Okay? So, um, so note again that once u is, and I'm going to use u star, is determined to be the optimal control, um, x equals x star, it could be a vector, right, because bx1, x2, uh, which is the optimal trajectory or state over time trajectory um, is determined from the dynamical system so as you look through those hundred plus examples you'll always see this, you'll always see a couple of, of pictures at the end the, the kind of the goal of that is find the optimal strategy for controlling in the resulting trajectory of the system you will never see like you'll never see a plot of J and to see that oh yeah I have a maximum there or I have a minimum there why <laughs> right J depends on you and and uh, and you is U is a, uh, I mean, as I said, it's, it's, in principle, it can take lots of lots of different, uh, not values, but U could be many different ways. For instance, for this particular U, this kind of theory says the J that we're looking at is maximum, which in this case is X1, right? So, so it means that if you try any other strategy, like maybe apply the drug, I don't know, a little bit earlier or something, right? Change this. What's going to happen with the corresponding? It's never going to be higher. That x1 of final time, t, is never going to get higher. It's going to be probably lower, right? I mean, here it might do funny things, but that was the objective, right? And that's what this means. That this particular shape, this particular strategy, gives the maximum possible x1. Okay? So you cannot visualize through a, you know, a plot of the objective function against something because that something is is a vast admissible controls are, are vastly I mean you cannot uh, represent them in any way. Okay? So there's a lot of kind of hidden things in here but uh, I hope that we can keep it sort of uh, straight. So, so the only thing that I'm, I'm going to um, ask you to do is kind of look through those. Maybe start looking at the examples of how they're set up. Maybe they're not two-dimensional. Maybe they're three-dimensional. Okay, and identify the, the objective functions, the state variables, and so forth. Right? Even in those four examples that I that I have, and then we'll talk about basically how we can crank this um, methodology. And get, and you'll be surprised how easy it is to actually get this hard answer, you know, re with relative ease, based on this on this principle. Thank you.